distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute pleasure to be here and I am deeply honoured to be asked to unveil this plaque. Before I do so, can I just pay tribute to Andrew Cave, uh, who sadly is not here. Now, we did a little bit of research of him about half an hour ago, quickly, because obviously he could have spoken for himself. But not being here, he was a 17-year-old in the Royal Navy, and he served on HMS Hermes in 1982 during the war. Now, he got a bee in his bonnet that he wanted all those who worked at reports like this to get the naval fleet ready and to thank them all to see if we get behind this brilliant idea to pay respect to all those who served here in the port in 82. We all backed him, and I'm told today I think Portland Port is the last one to receive this recognition. So I'd like to thank Andrew from the bottom of my heart for doing all this hard work, and thank too uh, Jeff Smith for providing the stone, I understand, free of charge, so thank you, Jeff, very much on which the plaque shall unveil the minute is on. Obviously we are here to pay tribute to the civilian and naval personnel who worked tirelessly in this port to get the fleet ready back in 1982. Now I happened to be serving at the time um, and with sort of boyish enthusiasm as one had in those days, we regretted not being sent. I was a Coldstream Guard and the Welsh, Scots and the Gurkhas went with five infantry brigade. But I was around, and so I remember the war, and the preparation for it, and the comments in the newspaper, how ships were turned around in a very short space of time. And where normally it would take maybe a week, two or three, ships have been turned around in one, two, or even three days. And I'm sure that applied here. So I'd like to thank you personally on behalf of all my friends and colleagues, some of whom didn't come back, for the work you did to prepare. Because all those at the front line leave people behind them. And without them behind them, of course, we don't have the ammunition and supplies and everything else to do the fighting, so you have a crucial role to play. Can I just remind you, for the sake of remembrance and effect, of how many people sadly died? And I had to look it up, not on the British side, but I wanted to remember others who died as well. And as you all know, the war lasted 74 days and ended on the 14th of June the Argentinians surrendered. We lost 255 personnel, three islanders, and 649 Argentinians were killed, and of course many others very badly wounded. In the British casualty list, the breakdown was as follows. 86 from the Royal Navy, 124 from the Army, 27 from the Royal Marines, 6 from the Merchant Navy, 4 from the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, and 8 Hong Kong sailors. That was the council list. Now the ships that sail from here, and I have a list, I don't believe it was all of them, but I'd like to mention them because there are two sailors right here today who served, one on RMS Typhoon, and one on RFA Engadine. They're here today. I've spoken to one, so thank you very much for all you did. The ships who took part, RMAS, RMAS Typhoon, HMS Intrepid, HMS Leeds Castle, RFA Engadine, as I've mentioned, RFA Bayleaf, RFA Bramble Leaf, RFA Plum Leaf, and MV British S. A very distinguished list, and obviously the crews who served. I just want to end by giving you an endearing image of the Falklands War that I still have and stays with me today, and injects maybe a little bit of humour into what was uh, a very bloody affair. I and a lot of friends went down to watch the QE2 leave, and there were thousands of people on board, clearly and thousands on the dockside waving goodbye to their husbands and boyfriends and brothers. And 
all the bands were there, the Royal Marines, the Guards, everybody. Every single tune you can imagine was of the most um, endearing, memorable songs. And everyone was crying, the tears just pouring down. I had a family of a friend of mine beside me who just could not stop crying. And then, just as the ship was about to pull out, a huge cheer went up couldn't understand what it was. And then all the men on the ship were pointing behind us, and we all looked behind us. And there was this lady who had climbed up onto something, and she was about 20 feet in the air. She'd removed her top and her bra, <laughs> and this huge crane came round, a massive crane hook. She placed the bra gently on top, crane took it to her boyfriend on the ship. <laughs> the tears went, the tears erupted, and the rest is history. Mm. So, it is a pleasure uh, to do this unveiling, and thank you very much for asking in preparing the task force for what was a very bloody 74-day war. Thank you. I remember seeing that many times. Yeah, yeah Engadine, yeah. yes. We yes. were um, we were in spring we were on spring train with all the down in Gibraltar when it all kicked off. Trump. With um, with all the vessels we just had a Yeah. You had to do a heck of a lot of work in a short time, I think, for that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well we came in um, we came into Falmouth and dropped off a squadron we were tra we had because we were a training ship. Yes. Um, and then came home for the weekend. We were expecting to pick up another squadron to go out training and then instead of doing that we got a phone call. Well, we'll get a phone call. Yeah, yeah we have, yeah, got the phone call to say report back to your ship in yes. Devonport. I thought Devonport. Yeah. She was in, was in Falmouth yesterday. Well, she's not you didn't realise what was happening, did you? Yeah. Well, we kind of, you know, we were kind of like waiting, 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 waiting. It was quite exciting at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 23. Although, yeah. you're involved, yeah. do you? My husband was on the Antelope. He was oh, shot in, oh, the antelope. And he was deputy harbour master here. Yes. Uh, yes. He left in there, the antelope was, was sunk, the one that was sunk. 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 Yeah. And he came back on the queue too. Oh, so I had a, quite a strange war in that we did all sorts of strange things. We yeah, had yeah, yeah. Um, we had some guys from the SBS on on board. We had uh, yeah. our, our role in San Carlos was to provide uh, once our helicopters disappeared was to bring in helicopters, repair, and all the rest of it. Yes, and guys from ashore. The special forces guy would come and yeah. have a hot meal, shower, change, do whatever they need to do, and then just disappear again. But we took some guys down with us, and their primary role was to sink the antelope properly. Oh, bad for morale. Oh, the when we got into San Carlos, the, yes. um, the bow was still yes, sinking. Ah, yeah. so so yeah. yeah. yes. yeah. 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 um, uh, probably a so so shipping so hazard, I suppose. Yeah. No, they just wanted it out of the way. Oh, they, oh I see. Was, uh, yeah. yeah, not not, not good, not good for morale. Right? No, so, yeah, no, so I can, just, I can. Imagine so that these guys went over in a Gemini and oh, uh, uh, did whatever it is they do. Yes. <laughs> and it, then it, it so yeah. Your husband must have been <laughs> lucky. Was he injured at all? Or? No, no, he was okay. 
rounds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was unexploded bombs, wasn't it? Yeah. Two or three of them. Was it? Was that box? It took quite a few. Locker, and he wanted to go down and get his money out of his locker, and they said, "No, you can't do that." <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> Wise decision. Not to... Yeah. Oh dear. Oh, friends. Oh well. Long time ago now, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. Man. Take time flies. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's good. Good to see this. Yeah. Argentina on the 2nd of April 1982, triggering the Falklands conflict. The rigorous training exercises provided by FOST immediately proved their worth. Virtually all the Royal Navy's combat ships active in the Falklands conflict had been worked up at Portland. A few months earlier, after a spell at Portland, HMS Sheffield had spent time next to an Argentine crew. One officer recalled, when we heard that we were fighting Argentina, it seemed very strange. A year ago, they were our friends. Now we were fighting them. Sheffield was the first Royal Naval ship lost through enemy action since 1945. After picking up survivors from the bombed HMS Antelope, many with horrible injuries, one captain remarked, Throughout the whole thing, it was noticeable that calmness reigned supreme. Maybe all that training at Portland had paid off in the long run. Royal Marines, with the special boat service from Poole, played a heroic central role in the recapture of the distant islands from the Argentinians. Both air crew and ground crew from HMS Osprey's helicopter squadrons operated on ships in the heat of the Falklands conflict.